Hey everybody, I'm somewhat bothered here today because I just found out that one of the most popular charismatic megachurch pastors right here in Canada, in fact not too far from where I live, uh, has resigned from his position because of, uh, because of uh, adultery, an affair, or whatever else they want to call it, because there's all kinds of different excuses and opinions and, and everything else that goes along with that kind of sad, unfortunate, terrible situation. And so he's gone. He's gone. And, uh, you know, now, you know, the, the problem with that is that there's such a fallout now. You know, family, uh, church members, 5,000 members, and uh, then you include everybody else that, you know, would be... Uh, somewhat involved with that ministry, whether through uh, online or however. But the fact is, is that there's a lot of broken pieces that have been left in the trail now, a lot of wounded hearts. And I was reading, uh, you know, some of the uh, comments from different people when the story broke just recently. I just, I just heard about it last night. And uh, many, many comments and many good comments, uh, you know, how, you know, there's so much focus on him and also upon the victim, whoever that happens to be, whatever the situation is there. And, you know, they were just saying, well, what about his wife and family? You know, we can't forget them as well. And I agree with all of that. I mean, my heart goes out to that. It's a such a terrible thing, such a terrible thing when a person of such influence and such accountability totally fails. Uh, to that extent, where it becomes a public disgrace. That's the problem when you're in the limelight. That's the problem when you are a celebrity pastor specifically. Uh, you know, when you fail, it affects so many, many people. So many people. But I was reading all these comments, and, you know, I, I didn't read anything about, you know, God. I read about how, you know, the wounded people, the hurt people, the disillusioned people... No comments whatsoever about God and how God feels about the whole thing. Because we know that in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, David fell in disgrace with Bathsheba when he committed adultery with her. And uh, you, know, you know the whole story there as well. Like he went for over a year, uh, you know, trying to hide it up, cover it up, you know, put it away. And, uh, you know, the Nathan the prophet came to him and exposed his sin, which was David's uh, repentance at that point right there, his great repentance in Psalm 51, where he cried out, Lord, I have sinned against you and you only. And he, he prayed for forgiveness and God forgave him. There was still, you know, a lot of consequences to that sin of David's, but he was a forgiven man. But the, the here's the key that I want to bring in this little video. In... 2 Samuel chapter 12, when Nathan confronts David about his sin, this is what Nathan says to David. He says, David, your sin has caused the enemies of God to blaspheme against him. You see, we fail to realize that, you know, because we're on such a human level, you know, our emotions and wounded hearts and broken relationships and all of that comes into play when a pastor falls into this kind of a uh, adulterous affair and especially when it becomes public and uh, you know when 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 all these different you know factors come to play in it like the fallout the ripple effect is enormous it really is and but but the, I think sometimes the real key issue that we miss is what does God feel? How does God feel about this? Are we forgetting that God's heart is broken over this? Are we forgetting that God is weeping over this horrible, adulterous uh, sin that has brought great reproach and great blasphemy to his holy name? God is a pure God. God's a holy God. God is a righteous God. And when we, his righteous uh, uh, representatives as pastors, when we, when we blaspheme in that way, when we fail in such tremendous uh, uh, ways, such as adultery, and uh, and that kind of terrible ruin that comes from that, sometimes we forget <clears throat> that the bottom line is that we have blasphemed against the holy name of God. 
And, you know, it's sad that we forget that. It, it really is. And so I just wanted to, you know, remind you about that here this morning, that every time, you know, some kind of public disgrace takes place uh, in a church, in a pastor, whoever, leaders, that there's a fallout, and it goes way beyond the human aspect of the fallout. But it also goes to heaven. It reaches heaven, and it brings great grieving in heaven. It, bring, it brings great sorrow and weeping to the heart of God. And so let's just, you know, keep focused on God. Let's walk pure. <clears throat> let's walk upright. Let's walk holy. Let's not allow these sins of the flesh to come upon us to the point where we fail and fall and bring reproach to the name of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.